believe that what I'm doing here needs to be addressed. This may be a tough one. When I got here, I saw Mike needed help. He, he might learn something from what I'm doing. No, I'm curious to watch it run, Freddy. There's a lot of moving parts here. There's about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of gold. If there's nine pieces in a pan, that could be millions. I brought my wife and kids, so this needs to work out well. Other oh. You all right? Yeah. This mountain is my life. This is all he has. He has no one else up here. This place hard is. Good to be with my buddy in his home state of Nevada. So what do you know about him? He's been at it for a long time. So he's a seasoned miner. Sometimes it takes us coming in before they're willing to shut down to, because they just want to keep making gold, you know? This might be our first mine intervention, Juan. Freddie and Juan arrange south of Nevada's Great Basin en route to a struggling claim run by veteran miner Mike Stevens. Gold was in the 1860s by miners on their way west to California. Historically seen as big gold country, in 1865, a 25 worth over half a million dollars today was discovered a few miles north of Mike's claim. It's beautiful here, huh? I like it a lot. Yeah. For nearly three decades, Mike hunting nuggets here struggles of the past two seasons threatened to sink more than just his own livelihood. I'm Juan. Hi, Juan. Well, nice to meet Will. You. Will. Yes, sir. And Mike, I assume. What's well, a cool-looking little plant you got here. Thank you. It's a work in progress. So is it just you two guys out here right now? OK. How much gold have you done this year? Well, we just got started so far. Bad year would be 100 ounces. We need four ounces a day, and we're just not. Well, this is my 28th season up here. You know, there was nothing here. I built this place from experience. And I didn't open up a textbook how to do this. It was all from experience. The resulting operation is all things that work. What seemed to be the, the main issue? Thanks for coming, but right now, we, we do a pretty good job on catching everything with about a 2% loss. Will's the one that called you in. I'm on my second season in Nevada with this great guy, but there's a lot of things that I'm seeing that need. Um, he doesn't want to accept the fact that he's probably throwing gold away. He's real big on catching nuggets. I think we're not focusing on the other gold that we could be capturing. The way we could get y'all out here to give us a hand, we could probably get this thing dialed in and, and make more money. There's a lot of things that I saw right when I got here that I, Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure that we're losing a lot of money. Okay. Will joined the operation two seasons ago. I was looking for a partner to come up and help him with his mine. So I contacted him, and next thing I know, I brought my family across the country to do some mining. When I got here, I saw Mike needed help. I could see there's a lot of problems. If Freddie and Juan didn't help to get his mine more productive and catching more gold, I don't know that Mike would be able to sustain mining. And, you know, I get it. I brought my wife and kids, so that's a lot of mouths to feed. Well, you got any of your gold with you? I do, I do. It's, uh, this stuff is near. We won't steal it, promise. <laughs> I'd like you to see some of the some of the typical stuff we get up here. Oh, that's beautiful. Very chunky. Yeah, nice. In the 28 years I've been doing this, I, I would put it to certainty at about 100% that I've thrown away a large nugget, something mm -hmm. very big that would make <clears throat> my eyes water. Concentrate on I'd rather have a bucket of that than oh yeah a bucket of those to be honest with you <laughs> well I'd rather, have, I'd rather have a bucket of both <laughs> <laughs> well show us around your plant guys okay how about we start at the beginning works Let's for go. me i think that when they see it what well, i've done i do things a little differently here than most placer operations do but maybe freddie and juan can figure a way out to catch those nuggets this is the three haul truck I think he's going to be a little guarded because this is his baby. This is all he has. He has no one else up here. He has his excavators, his rock truck, and his trommel. <clears throat> 100 holes in there with the torch. Diamond shape. Diamond shape seemed to work best instead of round. Does a really good job. And I think anything. anyone trying to make a change to it, a little stubborn. It used to be 
gear driven, and a couple years ago, 14 teeth snapped off of it. So instead of trying to repair that, and then put a drive system in and driving it with a tire. Yeah. So that works great. Well, what do you think? Let's run it for four hours and see, see how much bolt you get. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Right on. They may see some things that may not work in their minds, but after a little bit of explanation, I think that uh, Freddie, he might learn something from what I'm doing. Now, I'm not a rookie on the ground, but I know how to catch gold. Let's go! Get some gold! First bucket one. Hope we can get lucky with Woo 28 years ago, Mike gave up his job as an electrician to I was making good money, insurance benefits and whatnot. And I said, it's time to go. It's time to stop this for a little while. You just take a little vacation. Yeah. And uh, uh, I started seeing these mountains. And the very first thing that came to my mind was, there's gold there. I decided I was going to make a living in these mountains and it's gold that's in the ground out of it. It was a learning experience. This is the real deal out here. There's nobody standing behind you showing you how to do this right from scratch. Mike spent nearly three decades building this mine into not just his livelihood, but also his home. It's my life, what I do here, I want to keep doing it forever. To live out in the, in the country and look at God's creation every day. You know, I'm curious to watch it run, Freddie. There's a lot of moving parts here. Yeah, you know, it's been around a while. This may be a tough one, no. you know, plant. It would take us two, three weeks just to get everything redone. He's worried he may be losing big nuggets. We need to start with what's going to get him the pocket in the time that we're here. Mike feeds pay dirt into the 1940s converted asphalt drives as a trauma. Large rocks pass out the end where Will collects them in a waiting dump truck. The small material caught by the trauma down through a series of pipes into a jig. Anything smaller than one eighth of an inch should fall through the jig screen and into loose rock. The larger material passes into a nine inch wide chute, which funnels into a repurposed oil barrel. Coloring barrel, Mike punched holes into the drum so when it spins, the material gets broken up and dried out. This finest material then through the holes and into his last chance sluice boxes. You know, it's a little rough, but you know, he's got it set up the way he wants it. Mike believes this plant's still very productive, but there's a lot of problems. Mike's stubborn, it's just, hey, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. It's patch, patch, patch. You know, just let's go, let's go, let's go. Kind of a crap shoot. We've been running there. So many things worn out. We fix them when we have time. Look at that sluice down there. We're only here for a week, so just trying to look and see if there's any things that we can uh, help him recover more gold with. And he's doing a pretty good. No, honestly, the big chunky gold he has, it's easy to catch. Easy to catch those nuggets. Yeah, it's the fine gold you got to worry about. So maybe the that little guy. What are you thinking? He's got all nugget ripples in there. They're just plugged right solid. Yeah. Dress. Just keep on looking. This little chute here, that really isn't going to do anything. You know, with the amount of water you got coming off here, it's got to be some fine gold in there, too. Yeah, I would imagine so. Pulling out all kinds of big rock. Big rock means big gold. This dewatering trommel, it's just getting backed up. We can fix that. We'll figure something out to keep those holes cleaned out. Keep from getting blinded up. The dewatering trommel spins water off the wet rocks and reroutes any material that is an inch or less into the last chance sluice. Anything larger is set up the conveyor to the tailings pile. I'll keep panning. Yeah, I'll take a look at it, see what we're losing. Okay. Juan will sample the tailings out of the dewatering trommel. Mike's right about catching 98% of his gold. There should be nothing but clean gravel. So right there, there there's about four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine pieces of gold. One of them's out. the other eight, they're not real big, but, but they're there. It's a bad sign. You know that dewatering screen? I think we're actually creating kind of a muddy mess, and we're actually pushing it out the tailings conveyor. We're never even having a chance to be able to sluice it. One more. You see some big nuggets. Come on, big gold. And shut it down. Now, Mike. So I panned some of your uh, tailings coming on that conveyor. Out of one pan, it was three quarters full. About nine pieces in it. You can dump in gold. They're little, but they're there. I'm shocked. That's out of one pan. Whoa. We send pans through all day, every day. Damn. So, if there's nine pieces in a pan going up, that could be millions. Heartbroken? Don't be heartbroken. That's why we're here, Mike. Freddie and I, we're here. We want to help as best we can. Uh, I'm just hoping that he's going to be open to uh, change. What's going on, Mike? Today was quite a shocking day when I saw the gold that was in the conveyor hit a little bit. Honestly, you got a lot of it down. You know, you've done a lot of work out here, and you did all this with your money. This is my life, and I put my heart and soul into this place. I met my ex-wife, and we got married. Uh, so I took her dog and uh, did the best I could to be her father. And, uh, you know, I worked really hard to be that, that person in her life that was solid. When she was 19, she passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. that. That's a tough thing, man. That's a yeah. tough thing. Shortly thereafter, uh, I got divorced, so lost my wife, my daughter. So this place is where my heart is. This has been my. Yeah. That's real. No. Real. Man. It's a big concern that I've invested my life, my career, to be out here. Like right now, I need help. Honestly, this mine's more than just a mine for him. This is what's cold in business. This is his reason for being right now. So we really got to pull out all the stops and help him out as much as we can. Time to lay some gold up, huh? Yeah, this is the gold we got from that four-hour run. Dump her in. To cover this soaring cost of fuel, repairs, and make a profit. There's some, some dust chunky in there. stuff in there. Mike needs per day. And uh, some fine stuff, too. This four-hour test must deliver no less than two ounces. 0.37. Drop that guy in there, too. 1.60. One thing is we know we're losing fine gold and uh, we need to focus on that. So it's not the most ideal situation, but I know you're worried about your nuggets, right? You know, those yeah. big nuggets going off yeah. the end. Doc, he's a metal detecting professional. I thought about bringing him in to just swing a metal detector around your tailings piles and see if he finds a nice nugget there. Sounds great. Hey, guys. You know, my, my deal structure with Mike is I get a percentage of the gold at the end of the season. If he can't get his mind more productive and catching more gold, eventually it's truly financially, it's a burden. Looking for lost nuggets. Freddy! How's it going, Steve? Oh, man, great. Freddy's friend and treasure hunter to search hundreds of tons of coarse tailings. Mike, the claim owner here, he is worried, and I can see why that he's losing some substantial size. Sure. But what I was hoping you'd do, Steve, is uh, get your detector and start hitting some of his tailings files. Sure. Yeah, I'd be you know, more than happy it, to. We'll I see. know you know what you're doing. Let you be and let you get busy. Yeah. Half pound nuggets, metal detecting, and uh, this machine will do a fabulous job at that if you just get over one. That's what I would call a screamer. <laughs> it's really loud, really obvious target. 
It's exactly what a gold nugget would sound like. If Steve finds nuggets in the tailings, it will confirm Mike's fear that his plant's allowing nuggets to pass right through. And where is it? Okay, got it in the scoop. Okay, now it's not in the scoop. Put that down. Back in the scoop and... Unfortunately, in this case, it was a shell. While Steve continues the hunt for lost big gold. Well, honestly, Freddy, there's, there's a few things we can do here. Freddy and Juan devise a plan equally valuable, finer stuff. He's got that little trough, right? Yeah. I think we uh, cut into here, make a wider sluice, so that water's just not catching any gold. This dewatering trommel. What do you think about maybe putting a spray bar or a jet in here? So it's blowing through those holes. Absolutely. No, I think that's good. Then he's got these little sluices, all nugget riffles in there. They're just plugged right solid. I think we pull the nugget riffles out, get it set for fine gold. Because yeah. even if they're losing it here and here, opportunity to catch it here after that, yeah. that's the number one goal right there. Freddie and Juan will target three key areas where Mike is losing fine gold. The jig sends material through a narrow nine inch chute. A new 22-inch wide sluice box will slow the water and allow the gold to... The holes in the dewatering trommel block up, letting gold pass out onto the tailings conveyor. A high-powered spray bar will blast the barrel and safely into the sluices below. The nugget riffles on the sluices clog, causing gold to wash over the top. A new set of fine gold build up and catch any gold brought down from the barrel. After seven hours searching, Steve delivers the results from his nugget hunt. Well, I, I think Mike's doing a good job, honestly. Uh, I found a lot of goodies, but none of it was gold nuggets. There might be a lost nugget or two out there, but there's not like a pile of lost Nothing gold. Nothing to lose sleep over? No, good. no. I'll I be mean... happy to see that. Steve not finding a bit. You know, that's the final decision for me not to try to catch nuggets. Thank you. You know, thank you, Steve, for not finding a nugget, and I don't know that I'll ever say that ever. With lost nuggets ruled out. Well, we kind of came up with a little bit of a game plan. Freddie and Juan proposed. You know, one of the big issues we did have that we saw was that material coming off the end of the conveyor. It had gold in it still. If we are losing some of your smaller gold off, we got an opportunity to catch it with a new sluice box right there. Which right now, your scenario, it doesn't have much of a chance to find a home. So we talked about it, and, you know, or you, or we'd like uh, two ounces of gold. Well each two ounces each and that would cover our expenses it's a tough choice but i'd say let's go let's do it deal yeah. then sounds good it's a deal let's do I it appreciate it yes sir thank you good thank you you know if i'm losing fifty thousand a year that's substantial and over a 20-year period fifty thousand a year is a million bucks it's a good trade-off for four ounces of gold and the price of some material i don't know how much longer that plant would run the way Mike has, you know, his last stand on this thing. And right now with Freddie and Juan coming up, I think that they'll help him make that last stand and get it right back on track where it needs to be. What I'm doing is designing the sluice box that Freddie wants to build. Juan gets to work fabricating the first of their fixes. It's gonna be a little different. It's not just a regular straight sluice box. It's gonna have a little bit of a taper at the front. A blinch fine gold sluice to replace Mike's narrow nine inch chute. So you can see the shape up there. What's gonna happen is the material coming off of the duplex jig is gonna pop and then it's gonna fan out and give it 24 inches of uh, sluice surface. You know, right now, but it's gotten to the point where this extra percentage could actually mean the difference of him eating or actually putting fuel in the plant. One thing you want to do with materials, you can't let it have its own way. You got to force it into the situation, like especially with gold. In eastern Nevada, Freddie and Juan are battling a patched up plant. It's kind of like putting shoots in for cattle. And a miner's ways. This may be a tough one. Freddie's first fix, converting Mike's nine inch steel chute into a 22 inch gold catching sluice. Catch it here, we don't have to worry about losing it farther down. Let's say if we make that bottom end square, then we got rock wearing on rock as rocks and right? 
then when all those rocks are coming down, they're going to hit that. They're going to go over and down, but it's not wearing your steel out that right. way. It's going to wear the rocks out. Yep. Started Very laying good. out material. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Water is flowing too fast through Mike's chute, giving the gold no opportunity to be caught. The new wider sluice will allow the material to fan out and slow down to settle in the new expanded metal riffles. One of the things that we really want to focus on is we want to make sure that everything's completely level and square and straight. The cut trailer, the new sluice is taking shape. If there's any kind of bows or bends, what it'll do, it'll create a spot for that gold to go underneath and get lost. These magnets are set up so they're a true 90. You put them in, you turn them on, and it actually holds your plate in place so that weld that you know is 100%, it's gonna be a 90 degree. To make the angle stay perfectly straight, Juan has a clever trick. What doing here, we call these ribs, but what this does, this basically gives the box itself a little more rigidity. So that way when the plant is turning, it's twisting, you know, it doesn't get distorted. So by putting these ribs in, it doesn't flex, it doesn't move, and there's no water going underneath the sluice. Last weld here. Last weld, that was it. Well, Juan's up there building that new sluice box for this area right now. I think he got the easy job, me and Mike got the hard job. Before they can install the new sluice, Freddie and Mike must remove the old chute. Moving it all. After 20 years, the old chute is stuck firm. That one budge, shoot. while Juan waits for them to remove the old chute. So that makes it nice, you got your family here with you. Oh, I love it. I don't know how I'd be able to do it out here all summer. Yeah. He heads to meet Will's family who traveled 2,000 miles across the country for a better life. Come on, Calvin. Hi. Come say hi, Daddy. Hi, Mr. Juan. How you? How you doing? Nice to meet you too. Juan. Nice to Very you, nice to meet you. How you doing? Hi. Andrew, Mr. Andrew, Juan. Doing, bud? Good. Why don't you show Mr. Juan what you got going on? I came out to mine is because of my son, Andrew. Maybe you could fix your sluice box, too. What do we got going on? He has cystic fibrosis. It's, a, it's hard on his lungs. I just crushed up this. Mama. You crushed it? How'd you crush it? You know, the average life expectancy right now in the, the US. As a parent, when you get a diagnosis like that, especially something you don't fully understand, it hits you hard. Can I take a look at your pan? Yes. Happy six-year-old, ready to get out and enjoy life, run, jump, play. But you know, if Andrew catches a cold or the flu, it lead to permanent lung damage in his lungs. Since birth, Andrew has needed daily treatment, but the clean Nevada air has made Since coming back from um, last year, his lungs were crystal clear. The doctors were just ecstatic, as were we. And that's why we knew his gold mining. Andrew's got his rock crusher, that he can do his gold panning and find that gold like his daddy does. He looks up to everything that Will does like him. And just trickling on there. These gold is actually the heaviest, so that means the water can carry it. Well, all the dirt will go down. Cystic fibrosis is a very um, expensive disease. Nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah. There are a lot of doctor visits. There is a lot of medications. Each time, 25 pills, roughly, to help you know keep his lungs as healthy as possible. Bye. The ones and. and you know, really what we do is for them. You know, so I totally get what you're doing now. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah, who uh, else is crazy enough to drag their family across the country? It's amazing what he's doing out here with his son, and honestly, it's helping his son's health. To me, that, that's one of the most noble things he could be doing. Andrew, Dr. Freddie, see what we can't do, because now I want to do something special for him. Shot, huh? Build days remaining. 
It's all hands on deck to install the new sluice box in the 20-year-old system. Well, it's going to be sad, but out with the old, in with the new. We didn't want to cut it out until we had it safely secured, because if we'd have just cut it loose before, it would have just tied onto it. So we got to get it done safe. There, it's got tension on it, Freddy. OK. Ready to cut? Coming up. Let's fly this kite. Bye-bye, baby. Is Mike over there? Oh. <laughs> That's part of his life right there that just got taken away. Nice knowing you. You know how many patches we put in that damn thing? Let's just get in there. Let's see what it looks like. Cross your fingers. Let's hope it fits. Oh, 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 oh. Pull that in that way. Give it a push into that corner over there. There it is. The eagle has landed. Let's weld it. Take her down just a smidge. I did. Right there. You're too high. I'm scared. I'm looking right over top of it. OK. You got me? Yes. It's locking in right there. Bingo! Through this thing. No matter what, we've got a lot to get done today. It's the last day here we can work on stuff, and behind schedule as it is, all we can do now is just press on and just work, work, work. With just 24 hours to go, Freddie needs to complete fix. Fishing. I'm going to throw it right there. Let's get some more water into that dewatering screen. I know it sounds crazy. But by getting more water into it, it's going to clean that material better. And hoe or sluice boxes we're going to modify instead of it going up into the conveyor into the tailings pile. The holes in the dewatering trommel are packed with fine gold to escape up the conveyor. Freddie and Juan's fix adds a high-powered spray bar to keep water flowing, cleaning material, and at the same time. There's no chance of catching that piece of gold if it hits that conveyor. But if we can get it before it hits that conveyor, it's in these guys' pocket. I have to put some spurs on. Back to my rodeo days, back when I was barrel racing. Weld a bracket to mount the spray bar inside the free spinning barrel. I'll weld it to stand there. Long range welding. Oh. Don't roll in. Shark mother. Oh. When you guys retire this drum, you can sell it to a razor blade company. I can't say it's a super uncomfortable, a lot more comfortable. Well, one more job done. Spray bar installed to Mike's water supply. Lots of stuff to do. We got to cut into his main line, put a valve on it, get a hose up there, and get it hooked up. So when we fire this plant back, will you want to cut that? Yeah, definitely. So you enjoying it out in the well? I love it out here. I mean, Mike has, has been a wealth of knowledge, you know, and, and what I've learned in the last two years with him is I feel like I could go to the Yukon and just strike it big. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stick with this spot. Yeah, I like it here. Yeah. There she is. Yeah. Plumbing complete. It's time to get back finishing touches. Got some glue? Yes, sir. We'll get this on there. You kind of see where it's at, huh? What do you think? Yeah, make sure it clears. We're clearing that? Yeah, we're going to clear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Perfect. we're good. I like it. Perfect fix. Perfect, man. Some daylight remaining. Freddie rushes to complete his final fix on the end sluices. Well, right now, we're running out of time in here. We got a lot of stuff to get done so we can fire this for our test run. So we're gonna tune these up with some fine gold riffles. The nugget riffles in Mike's final run quickly pack up, allowing gold to wash over the top. A new set of fine gold riffles made from expanded metal will prevent that any gold brought down from the barrel. You have those heavy Hungarian riffles that are made, that are made for coarser material, right? What those ran over on you. So whatever gold you were catching in here, you were probably catching the first day. 
and then after that, the thing locked up on you like concrete, and then any gold now in your tailings pile. So this will alleviate that. Win, 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 win. It's been awesome to see those guys find all the problems in someone's plant and operation and not embarrass them, but show them a good, easy, solid fix. My balls. And the passion that they have for it and seeing that they truly do care to try to help us capture more gold. I mean, it's absolutely been amazing. That's well, a lot. Actually, that one's not square. We're working. There's more to this than what we initially thought, like just cutting that stuff out. Coming along all right down there? Little by little, it's kind of uh, small. <laughs> yeah. You burn your soil to burn your plant itself in another spot. Oh, yeah. You look at it and you think, I can do that in two hours. You're still screwing with it, trying to tear it apart. Oh. You all right? Yeah. We got to get it done to, to see if what we've done here is going to work or not going to work. Gold mining is th and lucky for Andrew. There's only one stand in town. Hi, Mr. Freddy. Hi, Mr. One. Hey, How you oh, doing, buddy? Freddy. All right, tell me what are you selling today. Hey. Lemonade. You probably don't get many visitors out here, huh? So they... what's AU stand for? Gold. Gold. That's Battle right. Give me five. There you go. That a boy. I'll take the yellow lemonade. All different colors. I'll take one of everything. Excellent. I Andrew? No, but you can give me some gold. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, here you go. Oh Thank my you, goodness, what do you say? You guys, Bye, buddy. Thank you, pleasure to meet Bye. you guys. Don't drink too much of that, okay, Calvin? <laughs> the world's most remote <laughs> lemonade stand. <laughs> You know, we've had you guys shut down for a couple days now, but yes, you have. I'm hoping that, you know, the improvements we made are going to help you guys out. It's the final day on Fred Intervention. Time to see if their fixes can rescue Mike's dream. You know, it's our goal that the increased recovery will make up for it in short order. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing the results. Right here, we teed into your existing water line. Now we've got water going into that dewatering barrel, so it'll wash that material more and hopefully from going up that conveyor and gone forever. Well, before, guys, you had some riffles in here, but it wasn't really a sluice box. It was a chute. Yeah. It was yeah. a good chute reel, but it was also transferring the gold to go up that conveyor, right? We actually built you a new sluice run. Every chance we can give that gold to get settled out and get trapped, that, and that's what we're doing with that sluice. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what that sluice box actually gives us. Well, in that little sluice down there, guys, the riffles, you have the wrong riffle for that type of material. We simplified it. And we've got a ripple configuration in there now that's going to go after that fine gold. I'm looking forward to those green mats. Well, really, guys, there's only one thing left to do, huh? Run, run, run. Let's run it. Run, run, fire run. it up. Fire it up. Let's do it. All right, fire it up. There it is. Started our run. Four hours. Hope we can get lucky with some gold today. Woohoo! First bucket, huh? First bucket. Excited, ready? Yeehaw! The first scoop for the new ripple. We boldly put this dirt where no dirt hole. So we built a real sluice box here. Now the gold is getting by that chance. And as long as it's got a fighting chance, we've got a chance to catch it. Well, the final channel of a lot better than they were before. You can see them doing their job now. You can actually see in the drum from halfway over. It's Wait. a little cleaner. Yep. And look at the material. It's quite a bit cleaner. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can see it right now. It's visible. It's already clean. The floor was yeah. completely brown, the whole thing. Yep. Moment of truth. I'm going to take a pan okay. off where Juan took it there and yeah, we'll see what's in it. There. Well, let's go pan this, guys. It sounds counterproductive because of the watering truck has helped break up the rest of that material up and get it down, get it screened. Rather lose a little water than a lot of gold. Yeah, for sure. The first test run showed Mike was hemorrhaging gold with nine pieces in just a single pan. Oh, 
Not a speck of gold. No, no gold. Guano, way better. That's what we want to see right there, Pat. Yeah. Extremely happy. Because you have to make the material do what you want it to do. You have to force it to do it. If you let it go on its own, or it's going to do. I'd say y'all did it. What, what Freddie just pulled off the conveyor, I mean, it's a complete game changer. Bucket, four hours. Last bucket. Moment of truth. So how's it look? It looks good. Yeah? The results of this test will determine if Freddy and Juan's fixes have secured Mike and Will's future here. If we get a 10% increase, I'll really be happy. It'll also make me sad because we've been throwing some gold. This is what we got in the four hour run. Okay. And once again, we got a nice flat nugget that didn't fit in the vial. So if we're in the four hour run, we're in a little bit better material. The first test delivered 1.6 ounces. Anything more than two ounces. 2.20. 2.2 ounces, a 37% increase on the first run. Over a week, this could deliver Mike 440 ounces, worth over three quarters of a million dollars. I am so happy with you guys coming up. You're gonna make us a lot of money in the long run with this stuff. That's right. That's gonna be a windfall. It's fabulous, I'm so happy for it. And now we've got a beer that's going to help keep us afloat. What do you think, Will? I think it's absolutely amazing. I mean, y'all took something, made an adjustment, and it's proof right there that, I mean, it's going to change our season. With Mike, you know, we have a partnership on this mine, and just that increase in gold by the end of the year, what I'll see different, it's going to be a big change. It's really going to make life a lot easier. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Right Thank you. Andrew, I think Freddie's got a little bit of a gift for you, bud. Ready one? Yeah, let's pull it off. This is your wash plant. It's your wash plant. This was Juan's idea. You it's know got what your that name says? on it. Yeah! yeah it does. Give Juan five on There you now. go, buddy. <laughs> I think at first he was almost speechless because he, he, he wasn't sure what to expect, but once they explained to him exactly what it, he can't wait to start running some, some pay dirt through it. If Mike's Tomo happens to break down, I'd lease him this for like $100 an hour so he can keep making gold out here. <laughs> <laughs> my new water plant, I'll find so much gold. And I'll find Mike. Right on, buddy. It's your own wash plant. Thank you all very much. You're no welcome. Absolutely. Well, a a pleasure. On this gold rush. I just hired this dude. I'm very confident. Like, I, you've got to be kidding me. If you know what you're doing, do it. If you don't, then we've got an issue here. That looks like Kevin. I can fix it. Trust me. No boy. The time for around is over. The pump is broken. Rick! Yeah? Stop! We're surging, man. It's easy like this. Yeah, we've had our problems. But uh, I'm not going to give a big speech. I'm just going to go like this. thousand ounce seven gold but after two months he has just over 500 ounces this time last year we had what 1500 ounces third of that we're just getting our ass kicked we've got a massive payroll bill and our fuel bill is touching on 300 bankrupt because of parker's failed attempt to mine the cluster cut slucifer is sitting idle waiting for pay dirt hey i want to talk to you about a game plan here We've got Big Red going, and we've got to get that pad built for Slucifer. It's a bit difficult, but I, I figure another driver, he says he's got a bunch of experience, and we just got to get this pad done. You bet, buddy. We're All on right. her. We're on Thanks, her. Thanks, Willie. Yeah, you bet. Big Red end of the last cut. 
At the other end, Parker has finally hit pay dirt. Now he needs Willie and his team to move over fifth to build a pad 50 feet high, then drag his wash plant up the slope and get Slucifer mining for gold. Up and running it. We can't start moving conveyors in or moving the plants in until that pad's done. So we need everybody here pound on. We gotta start getting some gold coming in. Expert operator Willie feeds dirt to the trucks. This pad is so we can get both those plants going. Then we're gonna do some damage. To build the 50-foot pad, Parker has three rock trucks an hour. Aaron has four years experience. Three days Parker's given us. I hope I, Matt is new to mining. Try my best. That's all I can do. And new recruit Ali previously worked with I'm very confident and I'm feeling very, very good. Like I have no issues at all. No worries. Please perfect. <laughs> need to reverse right to the edge of the ramp to dump has gone too far. I don't know how much experience this guy told Parker he has, but uh, I'm guessing he embellished a little, to say the least. But I want to try to pull you right from over your cap pretty well. Okay, this thing is really not stable. Let's move. for being on this mine the least amount of time. It's time for him to get, he's just gonna grind to a halt. To build Slucifer's pad ASAP, one truck needs to be loading and the third traveling between them at all times. What the is he doing? and transport Dredge 2 a hundred miles down the Yukon River and hit his $6,000 target. I guess I'm heading back to Dredge to see what progress they made. Kevin is spearheading Tony's chase for gold with Dredge. Oh, I disappeared for some reason. What the f See how bad that Dredge is tilting? left unattended and is now underwater. Every hour it's down is costing Tony up to 
dollar. It seems the minute I go away, everyone forgets that we got a hole in the back punch and we cannot fix the hole that's under the water line. It fills with water. Repeat. Be gone. No one emptied the back pontoon. Nobody paying attention? Basically, yes. Maybe you shouldn't take days off then, get up. <laughs> oh, really? Well, that's a good start on the day, isn't it? So it looks like, Kevin. I can fix Chip, it. you go first. So what the are you going to do about it? Get every pump on the property. Mm -hmm. Open up. As soon as that's above water, move to the next pontoon. Folks going to get wet feet. Yeah, well, that's not the way to do it. You can't pump out pontoons, Jack. I use the big pump to drop the water level. The pond. Drain the pond's going to take forever. And I'll get this pumped out in a few hours. Trust me. Yeah, no way. <laughs> yes, I can. We're going to drop the water level. So bang, bang, right? Kevin's plan? Empty the water out of the pontoons, one by one, to refloat the dredge in just a few hours. But Tony's higher pond before pumping out the pontoons. Kevin will then have to refill the pond over the next two days. Judge is sunk. Yeah, a little bit. Despite Tony's objections, Kevin's determined to put his own plan into action. Here's the battle plan. We're going to hook up a couple pumps, throw them in the hole, make sure they get going, and suck out as much water as possible. Let's do this. Fire them up. Let's crank it up. Tony sometimes has an idea in his head and he runs with it, but I know how to make this work. What was that?
See, we got a pretty even flow there, huh? Yeah. Spreading that material, but there you go. See, feeder from up higher. That isn't bad. It's like a rainfall, waterfall. See, perfect, man. Thanks, Freddie. Oh. Freddie kind of uh, gave me a few pointers. Definitely boosted me to end for the plant. It's way more confident now. But I feel pretty good. It's kind of feathering it. It seems to be running all right. What the f Now what's going on? It's spraying water. Rick, you got a copy, Rick? <laughs> it's building up in that pre-wash. Come on, shut it down. Lucifer. Parker's crew has been working around the clock to build Slucifer so they can get the plant up and running. Tomorrow I want to start getting the plant moved over there, so we need to have it done today. We're not far off now. By the end of the day, she'll be pretty damn tight. We've got Ali, he's kind of been slowing things down quite a bit, but uh, we kind of like get him moving really on. I'm kind of on my last lifeline here. So I gotta make sure we don't make any more mistakes. Uh, driver's manual for these trucks. So I think I got it right. Go to the front. Just trying to build this pass for Lucifer to sit on. Just trying to add to the, the elevation of it. Got a pretty good little system going, working it from dozer and flattens off the top. You can add another level to it. We gotta get this done and by some miracle we can actually start seeing any more mistakes. while struggling to keep up. What are you doing, Ali? Stop! safety concerns are to me is everybody's safety here and the profitability of the company. I have to let you go, Ollie. Yes, yeah, no problem. Okay. No hard feelings. I'll talk to Heather. Make sure you get... Yes, sir. No problem. So, Ollie didn't quite work out. Now that we're a truck down, we're going to have to figure something out because I don't know how there's a huge amount of work to do. trying to refloat Tony's dredge. Tony's big pump trying to pump the water out with two tiny pumps. Water level's not dropping yet? Not a f***ing lot. I think my day terribly interesting. Target of 6,000 ounces if he doesn't get the dredge up and running soon. Back at the Beats camper arrives. I was trying to find your place. <laughs> well, big enough. So it was a trip pretty good. It was a good trip. Tom Ibarra was Todd Hoffman's mechanic. Come well, on, we got a big problem there. You okay? 
I got it. But when Todd stopped mining, Tony leapt in with a job offer. Good, so let's not waste any time. Let's do it. Kevin needs some help with the. He's working for the Hoffmans. It just kind of got me hooked. When Todd decided he wasn't going to come back, Tony called me up and offered me a job, so here I am. Juan, good to see you again. Been pumping for ages. The water's not getting out quick enough. Okay. To get the pump pipes in, but because they're underwater, they're refilling as fast as he can pump it out. What do you think? We're just pissing water as we're pulling out. The same amount of water's coming back in. What I was thinking, what we should do is just build a little lid and put two holes in it and then have a hole for breathing and then it'll go out without letting more water come in. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Yeah, okay. Juan's plan? Fabricate a new hatch for the pontoons with two fitted. They'll use one pipe to pump the water out. The second pipe that reaches above the water level will allow air back in. This is going to be the lid that I'm going to build. I'm going to cut it out of that little thin steel. Juan's trailer is fully loaded with his own state-of-the-art. Time is money. We don't have much time. This takes all the guesswork out of it, so upload it onto the machine and cut it out. the ventilation pipe that will sit above the water line. Hopefully that does it, Kevin. Stick it in the pump, off we go! by the same amount of air via the breather pipe. Now, got it way back there. So I am slowly but surely winning. Hell, Dredge 1 is floating again and ready to mine gold. was just full, oh, full clogged of dirt. Yeah, I got it all out. Rick Ness has had to shut down his dirt-clogged wash plant. I think it all packed into this corner and it kind of just <laughs> clumped here. To get anywhere, he'll have to dial in his operation and fast. We've got to stop a lot of the <laughs> plugging up in here. Well, these slots may be too big, Rick. They're just letting too much air sock and like on every other one, weld a piece over half of them. That'll shoot that water out far. You'll have some going close and some going far. Get some more pressure. Looks, I just want it to work. <laughs> We'll try it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah, exactly. Let's make it happen. Pay dirt goes into the pre-wash before piling up in the corner and clogging the whole system. Freddy's plan? Reduce the size of the slots on the spray ball. If anyone overloads the feeder with pay dirt, the stronger jet should clear the dirt out of the feeder and send it safely down through the trommel. Feeding it, he's doing the best he can, but the water's not right. It creates a lot of havoc. Hopefully by blocking some of these off, the more coverage we can get, the more material it's going to push down. Done. They're on there, man. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's good. Quick and dirty, I love it. Simple, but that should be effective for sure. We'll fire it up then? Make some... Water's on, Z! Fire it up!
Hectate today. <laughs> After four days of moving dirt, Parker's crew has finished. Now the only thing keeping Parker from bringing in his first big gold haul of the season is moving his 45-ton wash plant new pad. Thing weighs 90,000 pounds. I can't tell you what the it's going to do. All right. I smoked like 8 million cigarettes the last time I did this. See what she's got. Here she goes. Am I good behind me? Yeah, everything's looking good on this end, Parker. Hey, it sounds awful, but Lucifer's dragging really good, so just uh, about her getting in place. Is this hell behind? How the f are we going to get it up that? Parker now has to navigate the narrow access ramp, barely wider than the machine is just falling off that hill into the cut. Let's hope this works. Here she goes. If Slucifer falls, it's game over for this $600,000 monster. Parker's right on the very end. He's got to be real careful here. Lucifer moves over about a foot, he's going to be with the bottom of that ball. I don't like it, but he's got nothing else to do but just keep going. That's all she got, man. Whoa, 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 easy, easy, easy. Easy, man, easy. You think we're clearing that? Yeah, you're going to clear it here by about a uh, whole quarter of an inch. I cut it a little close. That has cleared the access ramp. Now they can rotate Slucifer into position. You're looking good, man. Very nice, very nice. You're happy. Yeah. Nice one. Let's do it. Water. away, Big Red is pounding through the pay dirt. For the first time this season, Parondike Gold in his race to 6,000 ounces. Two plants running, that's a good feeling, that's how we make our money here. Maybe we're finally on our way to 6,000 ounces. Maybe. Like Parker, Tony Beats has a 6,000 ounce gold third of the way through the season, he's mined just 1,100 ounces. So it was nice to come back after days off and see the dreads on the water, huh? Oh. Now, anyway? Uh, yes. Maybe we uh, should weigh that up. Where is the cleanup, Monica? Oh, wait, see, let's see how much we have. Make it last, you know. Okay. Make him feel better. First, the gold from Kevin's dredge. 10, 30.16. Worth just over $36,000. At least there is a reason for this one. Yeah. So what? Next, the gold from Monica's wash blend. 60, 100, 200, 210, 220, or 0.92. Worth around $280,000. Our grand total right now is about 1370. The Beats and rivals Parker and Rick. So we need about 4,630 ounces more. If we're going to reach our goal of 6,000 ounces, Shall we get back to work? I guess. That's what you guys do it on there? What do you do? We all can drive around and drink coffee. Oh, that's a Dredge One can process 2,400 yards of dirt per day. It would take 3,000 the same amount of dirt. Right there. Right there? What is that? That's absolutely what I'm looking for. It'll work perfectly. Empty. No, I can't tell you, but you'll know soon enough. The pieces are coming. Looks good so far. Ooh, it's got some kick to it. This is the biggest Cajun boil I've ever done. Potatoes, sausage, shrimp, yeah, oh corn, yeah. crab legs. Thanks, brother. There'll be yeah, plenty. Now, wait a second, Rick, hold me. Take a breath. Oh, my. Thank you, Brody. Thank you, Brody. Thank you, Brody. Oh, 
not in there. Parker has a season goal of 6,000 ounces, but so far this year, 500. What's up, guys? Not a lot, you? Oh, you know, just another day in paradise. <laughs> Oh, nothing wrong with that. Coming out of Big Red. That's from Big yeah. Red, huh? Would have been nice to have two plants running all week, but at least we got sluice for ball put together. Let's see. On track, Parker needs 340 ounces a week. 120, 160, 190. Yeah. <laughs> 214. Yeah, nice. On the money. <laughs> Worth over 256,000. 737. We got a lot of gold. We got a long way to go. We have 5,300 ounces of gold to find. In a short time to find. What happened to 1,000 ounce seasons? Yeah. 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 2,000 ounce seasons. All right. Well, we've got two plants running now. Mountain of time to make up. Just thanks, guys. Good thanks. week, man. Just 30 more of them, boys. <laughs> <laughs> In his first season as mine boss, Rick has a target of a thousand ounces of gold last week, yielded just 30 ounces. It's been another one of those weeks, hasn't it? But, uh, you know, Freddie stepped in there, fixed his free bars, and, and honestly, I'm, I'm not going to give a big speech. I'm just going to go like this. Feast your eyes. Oh, oh, yes! Yeah, buddy. Yeah! Wow. That's what dreams are made of. That is heavy as hell. I had no idea that was that heavy. Here we go. Count it. 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, oh, yeah. 50, yeah. 60, yeah. 90. Oh, There's a. Uh, there she is, guys. 103.28. Yeah. That's over 123 grand right there, boys. Claim owner Seamus Christie joins them for the gold way. Well, that looks like just about enough to pay off the 475 dozer debt. I hate to bring it up, but yeah, yeah. that's the deal we made. Yeah, that's fair. At the start of the sea, monster dozer to get down to pay. And as the claim owner, he gets his modest 10% fee. <sighs> Keep up the good work. That leaves what? Six ounces. Easy come, easy go, right? Yeah. It was nothing. Hey, you know, it was, it's still early. We just made a huge jump. We just got a tenth of our season total in one week. Think about that. Now we're on a upward trend. Let's just keep it going. Yeah. Rally? Rally! Rally! Yeah, let's do that. Now that Rick's back on track, Freddie Dodge is heading home. Yep, I'm out of here. You've helped us out a lot, man. A lot. And I I owe you big time. No, you don't owe me. <laughs> you know what? Biggest thing I roll up for your guys. Yeah. You know, you keep a grin on, they will too. Keep your head up. Things will come through. Yeah, as long as we don't get complacent, I think that's so. I'll miss you guys. I'll miss you too. I'll be friend. back though. Good, I hope so. <laughs> Drive safe, buddy. Take care. Stop. On the next gold rush. All this sloppy building up here is punch a hole in the I'm not going to just sit here and put it in a pile and watch it dry like we're going to do up with you going this year. Do we have enough fuel to make it there? Yeah. Hey, you better get over here. The break wall's been breached. You got water up out of here. Yeah, jump the dish, yeah. On this gold rush. Why is Miss running? The conveyors, look! I keep running this. It's jammed up in all the conveyors. I mean, there's so much water. Everything's wet. I know that I get this number two option going this year. This is our first trip to the missile with Kick Commando. It's your trial by fire. Do we have enough fuel to make it there? It would be hard to play across the water. Hey, you better get over here. The brake wall's been breached. You got water pouring into the... Ryan, Ryan, go grab some rigging. Let's get the up out of here. Nothing's ever easy around here. It's been puke and rain for three days straight. It's really not.
not helping anything right now, but at the end of the day, we can't afford to shut the plant down because it's in the rain. I think we've got to keep this thing. Heavy midsummer rain is the least of Parker Schnabel's problems. He's chasing a 6,000 ounce bolt, but nearly halfway through his season, he's mined only 750 ounces, worth just 875,000. Yeah, I mean, with Tony screwing us over this spring, we've just got both plants up and running. Big Red's been running for a month and paired up Slusen. Parker's in the cut, loading 250 yards of dirt per hour into Slucifer's hopper feeder. Here, bedrock contact is underwater and I have to take at least two feet of bedrock, so, you know, there's going to be some wet material coming at the wash plant. Hey guys, this whole place is flooded over here. We're going to have to figure something out. Tyson just sent it all to the plant. It's like that. You know, that's what we've got to work with right now. The number one thing here is, though, is the plant has to stay running. Dig a ditch 200 feet long through the middle of his cut. 
The water should then drain to the deepest point to send it over the berm and into the settling pond beneath the wash plant. Trying to get the water drained from where Terry's been pulling hay from. Yeah, we're pretty much surrounded by water where we're working as fast as I can and uh, save this cut. Come on. No wonder the not with Come on. Uh, I can't tell if it's frost or if it's rocky bedrock. Yeah, I can't tell. Rick releases the rainwater from the flooded cut into the ditch. You go where I tell you to go, water. to get back to the other side of his 20 foot wide ditch. Oh yeah, I jumped in, in honor of that Evil Knievel show that was on. I will now jump this ditch. They call me Ricky Pastrana. to get his half million dollar rental across his new drainage ditch. They call me Ricky Pastrana. for our trucks. We've got to have access through here, so we're going to call and have a road. To avoid destroying any more excavators, Rick reinstates the road using a culvert pipe. Put in a culvert and got the road over it. We've got uh, continued access to the rest of our truck. Finally, Rick installs his biggest pump to send a thousand gallons a minute from the new drainage ditch safely out into the... Hey. chasing a 6,000 ounce, $7.2 million gold, but it's shut down. Our dredge just hit a hump of frozen ground that is higher than we can go over. Is it hard? Kevin is attempting to break through the frozen ground beneath the mud. To say we are right now, is it that hard? To beat the permafrost. We gotta figure out this pretty quick because right now it's downtime. Less gold, not gonna on something. So, what do you got? Frozen ground? We don't have much work with our dreads that have to drain the pot. That's going to take us a little bit of time. Drop the water table yep. and then see if we get through it. Yeah. Lots of to do. Yeah, yeah, go grab some coffee. <laughs> there you go. Well, somebody's got to do it, Kevin. It's taking forever to get out of Thistle. I'm going to have to go double up on the barges. I'm going to have to get a kit commando in the water. Because we got to get going to get 6,000 ounces out of the ground. We better get that dreads up and running. Tony's second season goal transfers from remote Thistle Creek via Dawson City to his claim in Eureka Creek. After spending two years and winning the 500 ton machine, failure is not an option. Honestly, I'm a little bit tired of throwing money at dreads too. You know what they say? Well, maybe two. work, because this has been three years. The dreads have to come out this year. It's going to be a point when it's going to be enough and no more and get rid of the thing. Because I'm done with it. Process with his newly renovated tugboat, the Kid Commando. I think you're good. It's maiden voyage to 30-ton off-road trailers to Thistle Creek. How's the loading go, Mike? Uh, pretty smooth, yeah? Oh yeah, they're not down, so now it's just more important than ever to get the parts over there from that dress number two. Oh yeah, I can get going right away, but who do I have in this deckhand? Why don't you take one with you, why don't you take one with you, get over there and get us a couple loads, okay? Yeah, I'm right on that. Okay, good.
future trial by fire. It's going to be a great boost in order to get this number two up and going, though. It's going to be a tight speed. It's the first time this boat's ever gone this far up river. First time it's really sailed, buddy. Juan's <laughs> here to troubleshoot if anything goes wrong. He's he's quite experienced with uh, engine stuff, so I'm here to get her done if something goes wrong. We got her, man. I think that's Tony. Is that your dad? Derek, lay down. Earlier in this season, Tony spent $200,000 to make the kit commando stable. Sides uh, doubles the chances of getting the dead side of that. Now, heading upriver at a steady four miles an hour, it will take two long dead remote Thistle Creek. How's the speed, Mike? Uh, slower than through molasses. Oh, man. But we've dropped from mid 6'2. No, I, I don't like that. I'm going to check that motor. Those motors are laboring bad. We've gone about five miles in two hours. The fuel, I don't know how much this burns. It's gonna burn a lot. That's not nothing I wanna hear. Just off the top of my head, I bet we'll probably burn 10 gallons an hour. Per, per uh, engine, per engine. At the rate we're going, how much longer before we get there, you think? So I don't know what my average is, but you can say two. So we're not even- Basically what we did was we added another two days to our trip. Instead of it being a two-day trip, it's a four-day trip upriver. We're gonna end up burning out through our fuel before we even make 60 mile. This great. Damn. I'm a. Damn. I'm a. Trip. It's a four-day trip upriver. Tony beats has instructed Mike to take the Kid Commando to remote Thistle Creek and get the giant 72-year-old machine working again. But the tug is running at half speed. I've seen what my ass end's doing. Making a lot of bubbles. Yeah, my ass end's getting pushed right up. Yeah. Be hydroplane across the water. With all the wind in the ass end, it pushes the front of the Kid Commando down, forcing my ass end up. So now I'm sitting there right. The tug, the kid commando, pushes the barge carrying the cargo through the water. They're dropping the back of the barge, and because they're attached, the front of the kid commando. The drop is also cause eyes along with its propellers, which are now breaching out of the water, causing a massive loss of thrust. If, I, if my ass went down a little bit more, it would mean my propellers go lower in the water. I get more speed. I'm wondering if there's a boat. So it would kind of force the ass end down. I'm not adjusting while on the river. Do we have enough fuel to make it there? I, think we... I, re I really don't want to have to go back with bad news. Well, you're the captain, man. You make the call. I'm going to stop around. I'm turning around one. Lucifer is shut down, dollars an hour in lost gold. Before he can fire it back up, he needs to solve two problems. Which belt? We got a tear here we got to take care of so we can start running again. What happened is uh, the material is really bad, rocks boiled over everything, and uh, piled up our conveyors here. And we got a tear in this belt, so we're going to cut out this damage here right here. We're going to fit up a piece put it in here it's not going to be pretty but it's going to get us back running so it's definitely a costly mistake almost halfway through the season parker has only mined eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars of his 7.2 million dollar gold worse the water coming underneath our berm back into our cut so we can't dig pay when it's all wet we're trying to try to stop this the rain has raised the level of the settling pond so water is seeping through the berm into the cut are in the berm on the far side of the settling pond so that the excess water flows out into Indian River, allowing the cut. Let's do this. The water in our settling pond is... So I'm just cutting this road out and letting... 
in a ditch for the water to get out of this pond and hopefully that will relieve our water problem. We should just stop water coming back into our cut. We're going to pop it like we lose a lot of sluicing time and right now we need those plants running in fine and bold. Here goes nothing. change here. I dug it out real good to get out of here, but for the time being, we don't have a massive pile of water draining back into our cut. Mitch completes his work on the belt. We've got our uh, repair in here. You know, it's not ideal because now we have another set of clips here for having an eye on all this, but it's back together. It's ready to run. Mick, fire it up. Run through the wash plant. See up and get back to making money. Bears on. Klondike climate was the second accidents. Since then, floods have struck Dawson 22 times. In 1979, the Yukon River turned the town into over $2 million worth of damage. Stop digging the digging pay out of the water and do it. Hey Rick, do you got a copy, Rick? Yeah, go for Rick. Hey, you better get over here. The break wall's been breached. We got water. Oh, Ryan, Ryan, go grab some rigging. Let's get this up out of here. Water is rushing over the berm. Threat flood the cut and stop Rick mining for so long. He'll go bust. If something happens to that do water and pump out. Getting this pump moved right away. I think this is gonna give away pretty quick, so trying to move as quick as we can. While his crew races to move the pump out of danger, Rick. Well, our fine tailings are kind of cutting off uh, this little pond back here where I'm trying to pump the water out of the cut, and it's it's trapping water. So I gotta here because that pond keeps getting any higher. It's gonna go over the bank into our cut. To lower the water in the tailings pond, Rick will create a path so that he can channel the water away into lower ground. But the tailings are wet. And deep. This mud could be five feet deep or it could be 25 feet deep. Deep enough to this machine up, this thing. This right here is not where I want to be. Please don't sink, please don't sink. Machine sinks in the mud, it's gone and I'm dead. I won't like it at all. I, but this is the first time where it's my, my equipment on the line. I gotta get this water back to draining out of here so we can get back to the water is starting to flow this way that means I'm winning with the pump crew is ready to reconnect and keep draining the cut I mean instantly the water's coming out I mean if we would have lost that berm we would have I'd rather get it out while it's dry than uh, have to snorkel in there and try and fish it out to the other side if you guys found the pump working it's not working to its full capacity peak still on not a whole lot of pressure though look at that like you can hear it struggling now too right catch us up there's got to be something going on inside of there what the heck maybe i think we got the pipes connected all wrong uh, the outlet pipe looks like it's on the intake nozzle are you kidding me 
They've made a rookie mistake. The pump's intake nozzle. Oh, I'm just gonna turn the pump around 180 degrees. Let's try that. Just try to slide over there. See if that fixes the problem. <laughs> See, you ready to go? <laughs> yeah, boy. It's like the equivalent of not reading the owner's manual. <laughs> 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 oh, Mr. Doobie reported her duty. Happy now, happy days. A little bit embarrassed about that. I mean, I'm the one that told them guys to hook it up. That was an option for that pump. And after scratching our heads and, and looking at it, it's uh, not the case. We had it hooked up wrong. So the water's draining now. It's gonna take, I would say within a couple hours, we'll be back to uh, back to normal. That is Mike. He didn't have enough power to make it up river. I'm so sick of this out of time around here. So see if we get some more power in there. The Kid Commando is back in Dawson after its failed voyage to this. Oh, it's not properly fitting on the barge. Probably have to sink the boat a little bit. Right around. Do it right. The biggest thing that we have to deal with, the way it's set, it's actually pushing the front down, which is in turn lifting the ass end. We're losing a lot of our power right there. So we're going to try to reposition this load going. It'll, it'll correct the issue. The trailers have a combined weight of 60 tons. Mike uses the 460 lunge. The trailers will haul the heaviest parts of Dredge 2 from its remote site in Thistle back to the riverbank. If we gotta get that's number two out of Thistle, we gotta have two barges going up and down. What happens when we start pushing? The butt of the boat wants to come up and we lose all our power. So we wanna make sure we have the weight in the back to keep us down propellers they need the stern of the tugboat deeper in the water Juan has a radical solution we're flooding the back of a boat you would think you want to keep water out of the boat but we're actually putting water in the boat to try to get as much weight as we can in the back to keep the props in the yeah it's a lot better now with uh load sitting in front and getting all that worked out that's not sitting much lower so all we pumped the water and all that has helped out good big time but props work better when they're in the actual water anyway so you ready for the next one oh, yeah okay Get it back out there. Take it to Thistle Head. Before we got the barge in front of the kid heading up the river right now. I got it running at 1600 RPMs. He's doing four miles, and that's in minimum speed. If we keep going at this rate, be happy as quite happy actually. Yeah, we're almost five miles an hour right now. That's pretty pretty decent now. It's actually impressing me. The trip up the thistle is all successful. Then we can start pulling more pieces out fast for the two boats. Hey Mike, good feel for you. Better. It's going much faster now. Roughly five miles an hour steady. Good. Okay Mike, that is good. Get that loading fixed. Now that we have two barges going, again dredge on us, thistle won't. We're getting pretty close on Thistle, yeah? We'll probably have anywhere between the five and the 10 loads left. Having a kit command up, give or take in the next week, 14 days, we should have 90% out of there, which will be pretty nice. Right now we're trying to get all of our equipment up and running. The guys are complaining about this dozer, are saying it's got no power. So I don't know what they're saying because everything in here looks good. Sometimes you just take a look at it. Even if you don't find anything, you tell them that you did. They jump back in and it's way better, right? It's just the old uh, mind over matter, but I don't see anything too out of place here. It's... Well, I think we got everything taken care of here. <laughs> season, Rick's already mined more gold than Parker or the Hoffmans managed in their rookie seasons. What a hell Well, I saw that uh, berm ready to go. I mean, uh, thank God we caught it when we did. You're right. I mean, if that had filler cut with water, we'd have a hell of a mess on our hands. 
I ended up the excavator. Hmm. I, I was crossing the ditch, and rather than fill the ditch, I thought I could just hop over it. And Ooh, just trying to cross the damn ditch. Ooh, that's how the door that's got bent. the door got bent. Oh, the truth comes out now. Yeah. I think I made an evil Knievel thing as I did it thing. That's what we got out of it, though. Ooh. So we all know that these jars hold about 100 ounces, and it's not 100. But, you know, with what we do, I mean, we could be looking at no gold right now. I find it hard to complain when I'm holding on to a jar of gold. Exactly. Let's weigh up this gold. Here we go. $1.2 million target. Rick needs at least 57 ounces every week. 50. Big jump. 60. Woo! Nice. And the big winner is... What is it? What is it? 77.3. Uh, yeah. Worth. This brings Rick's season total to 210 ounces. A quarter of a million dollars. Put it in. Yeah. Huh. One. All right, see you guys in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a tough week. We got thrown a lot of curveballs. Uh, that's kind of the name of the game up here. You got to adapt. We turned in a 77 hour. Um, I'm happy with it. I'm proud of my crew, as always. And uh, I'm proud of those 77 ounces. Uh, we need to keep doing that every week. What's up, guys? Nearly halfway through the season, Parker only has 12 $7.2 million gold. Weird week of weather. Yeah, summer's gone. Screwed us up a little bit. Big time. <laughs> Everything but dirt and through those wash plants, but apparently there's a lot of gold in it. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Cross, well, there's another pan in this somewhere, right? Yeah, we got another one. You want another one? Yeah. You want both? Yeah. I was kind of hoping I could keep this one. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's what we like. Yeah. Now. <laughs> it's nice having two plants running, that's for sure. Yeah. This is looking more like last year. Yeah. yeah. We're at uh, 737 now, so. 737 and, and go to Vegas. You put yours on red, I'll put. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll watch double zero come up and we'll have to come back up here bro left up so excited into the night she broke even and i told her well, baby that's a change machine <laughs> <laughs> all right let's just stay on track parker's two wash plants need to deliver a total of 350 ounces a week 60 buck 30 buck 50 162.55 $195,000. Well, guys, good job keeping Big Red running and making gold. Lucifer time. Yeah. Oh, 50. 150. Oh, yeah. 200. 212 and a quarter. Woo! Yeah. Worth over a quarter of a million dollars. What's that? 480 ounces? That 400 ounces? Oh, <laughs> my math's all off. <laughs> Season total of 1111. Worth $1.3 million. Honestly, good job, guys. I'm glad to see both plants running. We start pounding out some 300, 400 ounce weeks, and we'll start catching up on us soon. All right, let's bag it and tag it, Chris. You got it. Yeah, I mean, this week was kind of tough. A lot of bad weather, a lot of very wet pay at Slucifer and damn well. But uh, overall, a good week, you know? On the next, let's get up there, let's make it work. Tony beats. Finally rips the heart out of Dredge 2. Your throttle should be very easy to lift. Rick hits a pay dirt crisis. It's a giant waste of time. But Rick Sr. arrives ready to work. Guys, my dear, you're on night nice shift. Whatever it takes, I'm here to help. I'm not going to let my son fail. I'm sure as hell don't want to get beat by that Tony Beast this year. Overtake Tony, bringing his operation to the brink. That is not good. I threw out a 6,000 ounce goal at the start of the season, and what, here we are halfway through the season. Tony decides he's gonna get 6,000 ounces, and what, I guess mine more gold than us this year. We've never failed a season goal yet, and we're not about to start right now. I had to build the future for my kids, maybe grandkids here in the Klondike. For that, I need two things. I'm gonna have to get threats, number two. And between building boats and barges, we're going to get 6,000 ounces out of the ground. I was nervous because it was going to be running my own operation. I've got everything I own on the line. And I talked my friends into giving up their jobs on the promise that we'd find gold. Wrong has gone wrong. My dad told me I'd go broke and lose my friends this season. If I don't get 1,000 ounces of gold, he'll be right.
gets me up to have both these wash plants running 24-7. Sure as hell don't want to get beat by that Tony Meese this year. Parker is finally running on all cylinders. To reach his season goal, he needs over $390,000. Big Red is sluicing 200 yards an hour. A mile across the cut through another 250. With a nice big pile of hay like this, I think we can get there. Let's make it. On the other side of Slucifer's pad, mechanic Chad spots water spilling out of the diverter trough. These are just old rubber mounts we're using to divert the water, but clearly that's not going to work. Let's go out of the way. Um, you know, all those things are going to contribute. 
I don't know what's up, something's going wrong. The sluice box isn't catching it. I mean, the gold is definitely there. You're definitely losing gold, Rick. And they're buried in two inches of material. That material has to contact those riffles yeah. to get in that vortex. As water carries box, the heavy gold gets caught in the expanded metal riffles. If the riffles fill with dirt, wash straight out into the tailings. But these riffles up here, they're not doing The easiest way to find out is just go pan. I'm afraid to do that now. If Seamus finds gold in the waste plant, is it fault? And Rick's wrong to doubt the ground. I mean, I hope we haven't been chucking gold off the end of that sluice box, but yeah, fix it. Um, if it's the ground, there's nothing we can do, so. I don't see any. Do you see any? Man, I don't know, I ain't seen it. I thought we'd see gold in there, right? I thought we'd see something. Gold in that pan. Yeah, so was I. Now what the f we do now? I can't believe how I find out. Just not gonna have the amount of gold I need. I feel really bad for Rick. Those drill results have always come good for him. No, you're always taking a chance. It's always a risk. Rick needs a thousand ounces worth $1.2 million to break at 500 ounces. They're all going broke. Me. Me worth half of what it's supposed to have in it. Not even half. It's a giant waste of time. Waste of my time and my guy's time ground just go there and get it and it's not up ahead a sneak look at how the second half of this season unfolds successful season. Rick's ground is only delivering half the amount of gold he needs. It's crazy for trying to start an operation like this from scratch. So what happens if it fails? Could be the end for you. Dad, what's hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Man, I am beat. That was a 
Long ass freaking trip, man. It's not an easy travel up here, man. It's yeah, it's two days all in your airport. So how's it going? If you're not too beat, maybe you drop your bag and go take a look. I gotta get a couple hours sleep. Oh, I gotta get a trailer over here. All right, cool. After a two hour nap, Big Rick, the owner of a successful construction company, is ready to inspect his son's mining operation. Guys, my dad's here. Cow, that's impressive. I, I laid it out according to the drill results, you know, with a, a give or take. As far as what we're getting for numbers right now, it's coming up half as good as it says it, as the drill reports say, right? Ground isn't worth it. So I'm like, I'm at capacity right now. Oh, I don't have the people. Well, I'm here to help you. That's what I'm coming in. You gonna run a night shift? Whatever it takes, I'm here to help. Let us do it. All right. All right. By the way, it ain't much of a vacation. I'll let you know in the morning. I hope Rick really appreciates uh, you here and help us out. As the cruise shift comes to an end at 7 p.m., Big Rick starts the first ever night shift and compensate for the lack of gold so far. You good? Yep, good. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Night and might be the only thing that keeps us from going broke. Big Rick has 38 years in construction and gave his. He grew up, you know, always being around heavy equipment and you know the family business. I mean, we gave him a few opportunities when he was little to run the equipment. And it's been a really tough year for Rick this year, with his mother dying and uh, all the other things going on in his life, and to try to put this whole thing together. A humongous risk here. This is a crazy pipe dream. I'm not going to let my son fail. Uh, we're going to get every ounce of gold out of this thing, and we're going to work 20. Night shift sucks, and that's a fact. Enemy flying in and out of pistol so many. Anyway, we're near the end, taking dress number two apart. The sooner I get out of there, the better it is. Tony has Eureka to remove Thistle Creek. His mission? Remove the heart of his 72-year-old. Hey, if it's free and clear, we can lift the damn thing straight out. That'd be so nice to get it all in one spot, get it in Eureka Creek, then it'll be all day with the same people instead of being here, there, and every bar and get nothing done. Tony for a million dollars to get to this point. Any concerns about some of them left, Mike? We should call Come Undone if Cody does his job right. Yeah. That's the only thing they've done. That'd be the most difficult lift. Let's get up and let's make it work. Sounds good. Okay. The back of the 35 foot by the steel superstructure. Tony's plan? Have welder Cody attach four D rings onto the for each crane. They'll then raise the trommel before booming it horizontally till it's free of the structure. They can round. Cranes. I've never done anything like this before. Pretty much everything's uh, cut off the trommel there for her to be free. And the crane do a lift and then she should come free. The pressure is on crane operators Mike Beats. Cody, poke him up. And Mike Scriba. It's a big challenge, but we'll get her. Same thing is if it's hooked up solid. With the two cranes, you can play it safe. You want to be in control. Lift it up a little bit, lift it up a little bit. All the Scriba, suck it in. Way out of filter. Thanks.
Tony's attempting to remove the 13-ton trommel from Dredge 2. Almost halfway through the season of his 6,000-ounce, $7.2 million target, he can't afford any delays. Stay up, stay up, stay up. snagged on the superstructure, ripped off a D-ring. The two cranes working against each other, Tony will risk having Sun Mike take the full load of the 13-ton trouble on a... Well, take it straight up and swing it out. You'd have the whole thing level. Right, soon as soon as you clear, lift the up. And this that's number two. Be making me money instead of costing me money. Okay, my... It's not dangling off. 
off the cliff anymore. And to rebuild. Instead of taking a shortcut with trees and fine tailings, this time, Parker trucks in on rocks. We dug this down about six or eight feet. We put coarse tailings in, which we should have done in the first place. I think everything's ready down there. Now we just gotta try and line it all back up. Yeah. Stay there. I'm not. Come on. Yeah, I know. I don't want to bust these tracks. Brennan now drags Slucifer back into position on the newly armored pad. Watch for here. We've got to line it up. Dead nuts on with our super stacker conveyor. It's got to be right.
Tony needs 305 ounces, worth over $360,000. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 110, 120, 137, 138.2. Just $165,000. Not even half of what he needs. That's all you got? Better start producing that ground, huh? Here, we're here more. Maybe we could. Hang in there, down here. We'll get that day. Dread's number two over here. Things all picked back up. Yeah. So our total is uh, 1,558, roughly. So, what do you say? Well, we can't make any money sitting here. Nope. Almost halfway through the season, Tony only has a quarter of his... Anyway, we gotta be doing some royalties at Parker right now, so let's go over there and see what he's got. Landlords Tony and Minnie check up on Parker to collect their mid-season... Hey, dog, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. How are you? How are you? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Go piss on the tire. Well, his truck is here, so he's probably here. Hey, hey, Parker, can I see you all, man? Hey, let me throw some shoes on here. There you go. How are you guys doing? Third mid-season, time to come see you, have a look, see how you're making out. Any luck? Yeah. Parker, I ain't gonna say no, right? Um, I think Chris is down there cleaning gold right now. Let's go see what he's got. Like Tony, down $7.2 million season gold. Both miners are determined to get more gold than the other. And is still 446 ounces worth over $535,000 ahead of Parker. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so both plants performed really well after all the disasters we've been going through. So I throw some gold on the scales yeah. here we got? Sure. 30, 60, 
có cách khẳng định trung thành và tiếp tục cùng với thần tượng một bên tỏ ra thất vọng thì yêu cầu anh rời nhóm các nhà phê bình âm mang nhạc dùng pin tre bây giờ khi suga tiếp tục hoạt động của các thành viên anh vẫn sẽ không hoàn toàn lấy lại được lòng tin của người hâm mộ hàn quốc đặc biệt sự nước lẹo của công ty chủ quản big hit music khi đưa ra thông tin liên quan tới bê bối cũng khiến nhiều người ngao ngán hơn nữa ông cho rằng khi bts tiếp tục hoạt động với các thành viên hoàn thành nghĩa quân sự dư luận hàn quốc vẫn sẽ tiêu cực do suga vẫn là thành viên của nhóm nhạc này tuy nhiên khi nhà phê bình những đối mặt với phản ứng dữ dội từ những người hâm mộ quốc tế hàng loạt email được gửi tới jung min jae yêu cầu ông trực tiếp xin lỗi bts vì những phát biểu của mình ông sẽ thậm chí đã gọi điện để bày tỏ sự giận dữ khi cuộc tấn công vào jung min jae và vợ của ông người thường gây gắt nhiều hâm mộ ở xứ sở kim chi đã thành một cộng đồng fan gửi lời xin lỗi tình huống này cho thấy khả năng khác biệt rõ rệt giữa khán giả hàn quốc và quốc tế với những hành vi sai trái của người nổi tiếng đặc biệt là của các thần tượng k pop nhà phê bình và âm nhạc lim hee ju nhận xét nhiều người hâm mộ mỹ đã cho rằng truyền thông hàn quốc của tình hạ lệ bts điều này khác hoàn toàn so với bầu không khí ở hàn quốc đối với sự việc này và sự khác biệt trong tiêu chuẩn xã hội liên quan đến việc lái xe xây dựng ý kiến trái chiều của các chuyên gia Ừ. nhiều khán giả bày tỏ sự phẫn nộ của các cửa vòng hoa dưới chiếc sổ sở hai đưa cầu Suga tới BTS. Ừ. Ừ. bảy ngày sau khi xảy ra sự việc, Suga được cảnh sát triệu tập lần đầu để thẩm vấn. Lúc này, ừ. phản ứng về tương lai và sự nghiệp bộ anh của nhóm nhạc đình đám tiếp tục trả chiều với gắt thêm nữa. Một số người phân tích rằng nam tưởng tượng đang làm học của nền của BTS và nên dành nó một lợi ích của sáu thành viên còn lại, như của người hâm mộ. Mặt khác, nhiều người hâm mộ cho rằng hành vi của anh không đáng để chịu sự trừng phạt này. Họ nhấn mạnh BTS còn ở lại cùng nhau phát triển với tư cách nhóm nhạc đầy nghiệp viên. Về phía khán giả, các ý kiến trái chiều ngày càng nhiều. Một số người thậm chí bắt đầu đăng ảnh một video của bản thân đang cầm chai rượu bên trong phương tiện giao thông của mình lên mạng xã hội. Họ gọi đây là thử thách sugar. Khi sự việc ngày càng thân nút trên khán giả trên giảm thế giới này, một số quan chức lại công ty giải trí cũng phải vào cuộc. Và câu hỏi về việc liệu tình hình có đủ nghiêm trọng của sugar rồi nhóm hay không? Mặc dù hành động của anh gây đáng bị chỉ trích thì vẫn cần phải chỉ đánh luận để liệu xem đây có phải lý do anh ấy nên rời khỏi BTS hay không. Ừ. Đây là xin lỗi công chúng một cách chân thành và dành thời gian tự kiểm điểm bản thân. Điều đó khó có thể gây ra tổn hại lâu dài cho nhóm người này nhận xét. Đây là ảnh của Suga The Spot News Trung. Một quan chức khác cũng đồng quan điểm cho rằng vì không có ai bị thương cho vụ việc Suga vẫn có thể vững dẫn và tiếp tục sự nghiệp huy hòa của mình trong tương lai. Tuy nhiên, sự ý kiến khác cũng cho rằng BTS không nên được đối xử nhẹ nhàng hơn chỉ vì họ là nhóm nhạc K-pop nổi tiếng nhất hiện nay. Từ đây là thành viên của nhóm nhạc nhỏ hơn như một nhóm nhạc tâm binh. Sự bị buộc rời nhóm ngay lập tức. Nhiều người cho rằng dù không có thương vong cho vụ tai nạn khi lái xe khi sinh rượu, nó là một tội vô cùng nghiêm trọng, đặc biệt tại Hàn Quốc. Hơn nữa, sự không trung thực của Suga thì quản lý cũng là tổn hại đáng kể ở dự tính của BTS và ảnh hưởng to lớn của nhóm với giới trẻ trên thế giới. Suga giờ đi được cho là điều cần thiết để bảo vệ hình ảnh của nó tương lai Suga hiện tại vẫn chưa rõ ràng. Đây là hình ảnh Suga cúi đầu xin lỗi công chúng vì bề bối lái xe khi sử dụng. Và trước tình huống này thì nhà phê bình Kim Jo Hyun bày tỏ quan điểm hơn được BTS muốn truyền tải và việc Suga lái xe khi sử dụng là hoàn toàn trái ngược nhau. Nếu Suga vẫn ở lại nhóm, điều này sẽ đối nghịch với mọi thứ mà nhóm Kim thể hiện. BTS phải gánh chịu sức ép lớn và sẽ sẽ bóc hơn nhỏ cho nhóm từ Suga rời nhóm. Trong khi đó, nhà phê bình Lim Hee Yoon cho rằng việc quan trọng nhất hiện tại là nam tầm tượng cùng công ty phải đưa ra lời xin lỗi công khai trong giải thích thỏa đáng một quan tâm của công chúng. Nhưng nếu có người mất mạng, thì nó sẽ không hoàn toàn. Tuy nhiên, vì chuyện đó cũng không xảy ra, thì tôi bị Suga cần chân thành xin lỗi về công việc như về hình vi không trung thực trước đó để tiếp tục các hoạt động của nhóm nhạc. Nhà phê bình đã đưa ra giải pháp. Và hiện Suga đã biết tâm tư dài để thể hiện sự hợp của mình cho hành vi lái xe khi xây dựng. Tuy nhiên, trong thương, anh không thừa nhận việc bản thân từng không trung thực, thay vào đó anh cho là tuyên bố trước anh của anh là sự nhầm lẫn. Bây giờ mình đã đọc xong đầu báo ngày thứ năm mọi người ơi, cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi hết video này của mình. Và bây giờ thì xin chào và hẹn gặp lại mọi người ở những video đọc báo tiếp theo của mình nha. Thế bye bye mọi người.